Hi, it's Sarah. I'm at Nigel's home. Today we'll be making Hainanese chicken rice. Finally got the recipes. Hi, it's Sarah from New Malaysian Kitchen. Today I'm at Nigel's home. Hi, Toffee. How are you? He's going to teach me his family Hainanese chicken rice recipe. Normally, it's without a written recipe, so today I'm going to record it. Hi! <laughs> Hi, my name is Nigel and I am the proud owner of my YouTube channel Nigel's Joys and I'm here with the lovely Sarah Kong to record Hainanese chicken rice by the spirits of our ancestors. I teach this popular Malaysian street food at my cooking class and I'm so excited to learn the secrets to Nigel's family recipe. Here is Nigel's kitchen. He has prepared everything for making Hainanese chicken rice. What do you call this recipe? Spirits of our ancestors Hainanese chicken rice. As we keep on adding ingredients and keep on adding the amounts of the ingredients until the spirits, spirits of our ancestors, of our ancestors say enough, 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 enough. So this is an agak agak recipe, meaning that there's no recipe. So what I'm going to do today is to record everything so that you'll get a written recipe by the end of this video. There are five elements. Let's start with the chicken, shall we? Okay, we're going to poach the chicken in a flavorful stock. Mm -hmm. We get that stock from there and that's going to be the base for quite a few things in this particular dish. What <laughs> chicken are you using? I'm actually just using a good two kilo chicken from my poultry person. Whenever I buy chicken, I buy the whole thing. So the head, the feet, everything, because I find that it's a lot more economical. I teach Chinese chicken rice in my cooking class as well. Normally, I use free-range chicken. Certain free-range chicken has a more pronounced chicken flavor and gives a beautiful yellow sheen when it's cooked. But according to Nigel, it's okay to use regular chicken from the supermarket as well. The first element is poached chicken. I love going to my chicken seller because it gives me a lot more chicken feet for stock. She also chucks in the gizzard what we're gonna do with and this? the liver. Are we going to do anything with this? Yeah, we're just going to poach it all together. Oh, in the soup? Eventually. Okay, you don't want to overcook a liver, uh, otherwise it gets very, very tough. And gizzard, you can chuck it in immediately because this takes a while to cook. You don't want the skin of the gizzard because it's almost like leathery tough. Asians love this bit because it's actually extra protein, but once it's boiled up, it's got a really interesting texture. It's sort of slightly crunchy, um, but it's also really, really tender and meaty. From the gizzard. <laughs> yeah. When you get a whole chicken, you will get this. We're just going to put a whole load of water. Enough water. This is about four liters. Four liters of water. Yeah, approximately there. You just want to make sure that the chicken is covered by the water. Always start with a blanche. Don't yes. just chuck the meat in there. It cleans out all the blood and the gunk and all that. After blanching the chicken for about five minutes, you can see scum forming on the surface. Now it's time to remove the chicken and drain the water. This will ensure that our chicken soup is clear, not murky. We're hardly done with chicken. Soon we'll poach the chicken and shock it in ice water. In the meantime, we'll make the rest of the condiments. The second thing we're going to do is oil rice. Nigel's family recipe uses a mix of long grain jasmine rice and glutinous rice. Then we wash the rice, fry the rice in chicken fat and some pandan for added fat. Just make sure it's nicely coated. And pop the rice into the rice cooker. Level the rice mm -hmm. out, give it a knock so it sits properly. Okay, that's a little too little water, so I'm going to put in another water cup or so. My finger, I think the first phalange is a little big. So what I do is I just do a little under that. So that's drain How about water. mine? Yours, you'll probably go to the first phalange. Mm. Yeah? Okay. So that's about so right, right? Just right here. Yep. And another quarter cup. So it is four cups of water. Yep. The third thing we're going to do is soy gravy. Nigel uses bonito flakes and kombu to infuse more umami flavor into the soy gravy. 
I was pleasantly surprised. Steep the dashi for 15 minutes and half an hour. Drain it. And then add soy sauce and sesame oil into the dashi for a flavorful soy gravy. Our fourth element is the chili sauce. Large chilies for flavor and small bird's eye chilies for heat. Snip the chilies into the blender, then we'll prepare some of the aromatics. Peel some garlic and shallots, zest a lime, squeeze some lime juice, peel the ginger. Easiest way of peeling ginger, I use a big spoon. Then blend everything together with a cup of dashi stock. Finally, flavor it with some salt. Pour the finely blended chilli sauce into a nice serving bowl. The fifth element is chicken soup. Poaching the blanched chicken in the soup should be the first thing you do, but today I'm saving the best for the last. Add hot water into a pot, poach the chicken in spring onions, pandan, garlic, ginger, and dried anchovies. A small handful. Here we go. About 10 grams. 10 grams. Let's check out the soup. I wish you could smell the fragrance of the pandan from the soup. While waiting for the chicken to cook, we are going to prepare the coriander and the spring onion garnish. Nigel has a cool tool for slicing thin, wispy spring onions. Right. Water spinach, spinach cutter. cutter. I need it in my life. Right. Here. Yep, yep. Push it. Oh, yes. no. And then, and then pull it through. Amazing. It through. That's it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Strands of the spring onions ribbons. So pretty. Is it? Yeah. I think our soup is almost done. Nigel, who is a baker, loves precision, so we are using a thermometer to get the perfect temperature. Couple 70. more minutes. 75, correct? 71. 71. And then you take it out, and uh, the residual heat basically cooks it through. Transfer the chicken into a bowl of ice water. This stops the chicken from cooking so that the meat will be tender. It also gives the chicken skin a beautiful succulent texture. You want this to come up to about 72-73 degrees Celsius. If you don't have a thermometer, it's fine. If you see that over here, it's coming out, it's about done. Temperature is still going up. We're looking for about 72. It will keep on going up while it's sitting in the ice bath. Funny. Inside, it still continues to cook. How long do we put this in for? Um, about 5 to 10 minutes. It's a good rest. Okay. So Nigel's shortcut is using a pair of scissors. We cut into the thigh first. And the joint. Okay, find the joint. Okay, let's just cut this up first. Look at that. We need it to be slightly pink, not too much. But the juices are still running clear. So what you do is you cut it and you bend it backwards until the joint displays. Okay. Okay. And you see that joint over there? Mm. And then you just use the scissors and cut. No wonder it's easy. He has a secret using scissors. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's much easier this way. Much but use easier. a cleaver. Oh my god. Yeah. I am not good with a cleaver. Okay, here we go. We do the same with the wings. Bend it back. Bend the wings. All right, and then use the scissors to find the joint. Now this joint is a little harder. Okay. There we go. All right. Okay. There's a wing. Okay. okay. Cut. Sort of where the breastbone is, and locate the bone. Cut away from the bone, and look at that. It's just perfect. It's absolutely perfect. This is home style chopping. I like yeah, it. Yeah, I don't. I don't do. It's not the, even chopping. It's snipping and it's snipping and cutting and, and slicing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, this is really much easier. And there we go. That's one breast. Your breastbone is here. Okay, so just cut along your breastbone. Don't ever cut towards you. Uh, cut perpendicular to you or. And there we go. It's loosened from the breastbone already. Mm -hmm. You can actually use your finger to tear this, but sometimes okay. it's a little bit idea. Use your knife. There we go. So you can just feel along until you feel the bone. Mm -hmm. See how it comes off? It's actually really easy. 
There's hardly any big cracking sounds oh. at this point. Okay. And we're done. Okay. There's your bow. We have chopped the chicken into um, how many pieces? Six pieces. Yep. See how easy that is? So separating the thigh yep. with the drumstick. Yep. Now we're going to slice and arrange the chicken on a bed of cucumbers. This is done. This is done. After carving the chicken, this carcass, we can put it back in. Lunch is ready. Now it's time to put everything together. Drench it a little bit in the soy dashi sauce. Don't do too much, otherwise it gets a bit salty. It's enough. You can always add more of the sauce later. And then all these herbs that were sitting in ice water are now nice and crisp and green. I like a lot, so I'm just going to put it all on. They've all curled up beautifully. There we go. Looks good. Scoop out the fragrant oil rice that has been kept warm in the rice cooker. Pour chicken soup in a bowl and add lots of chili sauce onto your plate. Now we have a complete Hainanese chicken rice menu with a slow boiled chicken soup fragrant oil rice, tender chicken with succulent skin, served with umami soy gravy and spicy chili sauce. If you haven't already, check out our previous video on how to make rose pork belly. Absolutely perfect. Here it is. Don't say anything. Mm. In Chinese stew, you, you can actually use this rice too. Instead of making the chicken, you can mm -hmm. use the roast pork. You make the rice, you make the chili, you make the soy sauce. Yep, the yep. soy dashi sauce. So that would be <laughs> two different Malaysian meals. The roast pork belly rice and the Hainanese chicken rice. Or better yet, make them all together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I learned a few things today that's very different from how I normally do it. In Nigel's recipe, he uses glutinous rice gives the rice a little bit of sticky texture. And number two is the dashi stock. He uses bonito flakes, kombu, borrowed some Japanese flavor into his family recipe. And what I really like is how he chops the chicken. It's so much easier. I've been practicing for so long. <laughs> Using a cleaver, I chop with the bones as well. But then today I learned an easier way of doing it. Just a paring knife, scissors, Yep, and using your much, hands to yeah. tear things off, yeah, that's much easier. So this is something I believe that home cook without much experience can also do. Yeah. And we've got the recipes. The full recipe will be in my blog and Nigel's blog. Check it out. New Malaysian Kitchen and Nigel'sJoy.com Nigel'sJoy.com Be sure to try out. Give us a thumbs up. And I'll see you in our next video. Bye!